So, um, very welcome to all of you. Um, we have now uh, been doing these online sessions a few times and um, it seems that um, it's well appreciated. So I'm happy to give another one to you. Um, first of all, the agenda of today. Um, so I will talk about the mission of our classical music program because we have a clear vision on what it means to study higher art education, higher music education, and um, uh, what we want to bring you to when you study with us. Um, we will also talk about the social situation of the Royal Conservatory of Antwerp and the, um, the embedding in the single arts campus, which gives you extra opportunities. Uh, we will also talk about um, the different programs and connections between the bachelor and the master, the instruments that are on offer, the differences between the bachelor and the master, some connections in the curriculum which makes it uh, um, very attractive, um, the international orientation of the program and of the school. I believe that's a real asset for uh, um, for you to come to study here. Sorry, I was too fast. Uh, some example programs about postgraduates and then how to meet and get to know us and the teachers and then some information on the entrance examinations. And then of course, there's room for um, questions and hopefully also answers. Um, so first about um, our program, the, um, yeah, what we want to do is we want to develop you as a, um, um, a talented uh, musician to become a real artistic personality. This means uh, professional excellence, of course, but also creativity and, um, and know how so that you can play an active role in the local and in the international music scene eh? and in the uh, uh, society in a broader aspect. So important things here are the artistic personality. We want you to become you and not um, the person we want you to. It's about you. It's all about you. As an artist, you will also be a bridge builder. Um, you, of course, you can uh, become a member of an orchestra or you can become um, a teacher, but there are many, many more possibilities so that as an artist, you are a bridge builder between communities and in society. Many of our musicians, they have, uh, when they graduate, so-called portfolio carriere. Portfolio carriere means that most of the, the um, people who graduate, they do several jobs. And, and with the combination of all the jobs, first of all, it's nurturing the different jobs to do, diff to do um, as uh, for instance, both freelance, but also social artistic projects or music theater or teaching together. Um, and um, well, that's something that you need to know when you become an artist, you will not have a nine to five life, daily life. I hope that's also why you choose to be an artist. Eh? Um, of course, studying music is much about tradition, but it's also much about renovation, about new things, about um, um, re doing research, about making new uh, music. Eh? So, while well, maybe in your training up till now you have mostly done traditional repertoire, we will also uh, challenge you to make creative new projects and uh, to, um, to open up to, to other um, art forms. Eh? So not only stick within the music discipline, but collaborate with, uh, with other art forms. Um, and then which is really important as a musician, that is that with your artistic personality, you we work within international reference frame. Eh? Um, music world today is it's not it's not a local world. It's an international world. 
how will we do that of course we will give you optimized individual training eh? and we will help you to develop to the highest possible level that you can achieve um, how we do that of course we have great teachers eh? with international renome and they take care of the individual uh, coaching in your discipline and this um, musical mastery is supported with a, a broad basis of artistic music theoretical and, and general cultural competences and we add to this um, to this training a lot of practical uh, professional experience so collaborations in orchestras internships and uh, master classes in professional ensembles uh, or with international guests. Um, which is also important is that you become a critical artist. Sorry. Um, that you become a critical artist. And this means that you will also do research in the arts so that you know why you play what, uh, on which, in which way. Eh? So that you become uh, an informed musician. Um, apart from the critical approach, you will also have uh, some subjects regarded to the social cultural world, the economic world, and the um, society evolutions. Eh? So we have subjects like uh, art philosophy and um, um, introduction to Western humanities for having a broad scope, but you will also have arts entrepreneurship. And uh, as I said, you make your own projects and learn how to market them and how to present yourself and what are your values, your unique values. We work in an international context. Eh? So we, um, we have, of course, this great uh, um, collaboration on the campus, the single. Um, we work together in the UP um, University College with also the visual arts and with some of the other training programs, but mainly the many international partnerships um, make sure that uh, we can give you the optimal um, learning possibilities. Eh? Um, so about the Royal Conservatoire, the Conservatoire has quite a tradition. It has been founded by Peter Benoit um, at the end of the 19th century. Peter Benoit was a, a Flemish composer also for the international uh, guests today. We have about 650 students of which 450 are doing the music course. Um, a, of these 450, half of our students are international music students. And on top of that, we also invite Erasmus students uh, to come. And as a student from the conservatoire, you can also go out on Erasmus exchange. We offer training in music, in dance, in theater, and also um, the educational masters, which um, gives you the opportunity to not only discover um, music, but also collaborations with other disciplines, which is today in the professional field a real asset if you, if you have these competences. I mean, if you look to the programmation of the cultural uh, stages, many of them, they offer this music theatre or these collaborations. Um, so it's important that during your studies, you are actively uh, involved in that part too. We have a collaboration with the visual arts in uh, training, the Royal Academy of Antwerp. And for all the things that we do in the house, the productions, uh, we have a, a big supporting production team. So that gives you also uh, opportunities in the house with opera, with orchestra, and so on and so on. And uh, the offer ex is extended with a, a huge Heritage Library, just to say that our library is bigger than the library of the Conservatoire of Paris. So it's really a big, big, big library and offers you a lot of possibilities with repertoire, but also uh, when it comes to research. Now, I was talking already about the Art Campus de Single. 
what makes this uh, so special? Well, in our campus, we have a combination of learning uh, in the conservatoire of producing. There are many producing um, ensembles uh, and uh, um, chamber music um, uh, groups on the campus, but also there is uh, a dance company, there are theatre companies. There's an uh, um, educational organization, so for art education for kids. Um, so, and then on top of that, you have the Art Center, the single, which shows you um, productions for music, theatre, dance, and also architecture uh, of an um, international level which means that when you stop your lessons in the evening, you can go to concerts of the great performance and that costs only five euro uh, to enter as a student. So I think that's really um, very in yeah, inspiring. So um, artistic collaborations are possible. The arts campus has a, a great infrastructure. We have uh, 51 rooms, we have five own concert and theatre halls. Um, we have a very vivid um, research um, team on the campus. There is an in-house physiotherapy practice. So um, in case you might have problems or injuries or um, um, yeah muscle problems. You, we have a specialized team of, uh, of uh, physiotherapists who are used to work with uh, musicians and dancers. Um, of course, we have uh, uh, food and drinks on the campus, like uh, a student restaurant, artist uh, foyer, and we have a, a restaurant that is open uh, seven days a week from nine till 11, 12 in the evening. It's called the Gran Café. It's a real restaurant, but um, so you will not die from hunger or thirst in the campus. Um, also uh, connected with the library, we have a multimedia um, reading room, um, which is also on for students, but also for people who visit the campus. Antwerp is uh, um, easy accessible as a city and it's also a nice uh, student life city. Eh? If you want to know a bit more about that, you can go to the website of Gate 15 um, to learn more about Antwerp student city. Now, about our programs, here you can see how uh, our um, education is organized. So first you choose for an academical bachelor in music. The academical bachelor is three years, it's 180 study points and um, within classical music you can choose between instrument voice or composition. Um, after these three years you uh, automatically continue to the master of music and there there are several options. You can do the uh, what we call the main discipline master it's a master in uh, Flanders, it's two years and it's 100 study, uh, 120 credits. Um, and you can choose to have a master in your main discipline or, and that's for the people who speak Dutch, you can immediately choose to have an educational uh, master in music. So then the uh, all tools to become a teacher are implemented in these 120 study points. Yeah. The same goes for composition. There is a straight connection from the bachelor to the master composition. Two years, 120 study points, or you can choose immediately to do an educational master in music. We also have the master of conducting. We offer choir conducting, half abra conducting, and from next year onwards also orchestra conducting. Um, the same here, it's a two-year program, 120 uh, credits, and you can also immediately go for the educational master. Now, many of our students who first want to focus on the main discipline, 
they want to do this educational um, diploma afterwards. And that is also possible. So after finishing your regular model, you can do a one-year program, which is not mentioned here, but it's a one-year program with only the um, subjects related to uh, the teacher's training. So in that case, you study three years in the master and not two years. But if you want, you know you want to become a teacher uh, or partly a teacher, you can um, immediately do this one. This is not an easy option, as you see, because it's three years in two years, but at least for the, the fast students, this is really possible. There's also a jazz program, but I guess you are not interested in that because uh, this is an uh, info session on classical music. So the instruments that we have on offer are all the um, regular instruments. So I think accordion, this is English horn, viola, bass, clarinet, uh, cello, double bass, double bassoon, bassoon, flute, guitar, harp, oboe, uh, French horn, clarinet, harpsichord, marimba, organ, percussion, piano, pianoforte, piccolo, sax horn, saxophone, trombone, trumpet, tuba, a violin and voice. So you see some asterisks with, uh, next to the some instruments. This means that we only offer a master in this program. Normally during the bachelor you take this instrument as a related instrument, as an optional, and after for instance finishing your master of oboe while studying five years or three years uh, English horn as an uh, related instrument, you can redo your master and get a master diploma of um, English horn as well. The same goes for marimba with percussion, for piccolo with flute, and so on and so on. The master and the bachelor, they have a different profile. Eh? So in the bachelor training, it's a polyvalent training with a broad basis of uh, knowledge and um, attitudes and, and uh, achievements on artistic but also on general cultural and on research uh, um, area. The, um, you will study one-to-one -one with your main teacher. Um, he will be um, really act like a guide. Eh? and we will achieve the acquisition of your musical mastery um, and start with the development of your artistic personality. So there's more coaching. Uh, we will help you to get uh, a critical attitude, um, creativity, and help you with getting um, an independent study attitude. Yeah? Um, so that's for the bachelor. Uh, in the master, there will be much more um, space in the curriculum for uh, own choices, because in your development as an artistic personality, you will find out what is best for you to focus on. And then you also need to have the room in your curriculum to be able to take the subjects that you want to uh, continue a part, of course, from your main uh, discipline. We will further develop your artistic personality and um, it will focus on an integrated way of um, using all the tools that you learned in the bachelor. Okay? Um, you will also work on own artistic projects, if possible, in an uh, uh, interdisciplinary way and will also help you to become a young entrepreneur and how to uh, pitch your project and how to organize them in society. Um, you will work more, much, much more independent, eh? still with the individual coaching of the main teachers, of course, but in the master, we expect more uh, entrepreneurship and more um, um, independent learning. So for those who are thinking of maybe doing the uh, educational master 
music is, as I said, an integrated uh, program focusing on artistic and educational tools in one program of 120 ECTS. You will still have, as in the normal master, the individual coaching of the principal subject teacher, and uh, you will also finalize your study with a master thesis. But apart from that, you will have full pedagogical and didactic trainings, including the internships and uh, a special um, final artwork on art educational matters. Um, as I said, there is the possibility to take a shortened program of six credits after an other master, yeah? after your regular master. About the uh, connections in the curriculum, for us it's really important that during your study you build up uh, experience and a network in the professional field. Yeah? This means orchestra projects, ensemble playing, opera, master classes, um, also didactics outings, yeah? so um, visits outside, internships, happenings, project work. Um, because your wallet, your network wallet, when you graduate is extremely important to be successful in the professional field. It's not only about playing well and knowing all your skills, it's also about having your network, having done experience in professional field. And uh, so that the, the gap between studying and working is really close. And I have to say, in that way that already 70% of our students are during the studies, during the master studies, already active in the professional field. So um, this way of work really helps our students. Another thing which is really important in our program is the interdisciplinary cooperation. If you are just interested to play violin and to do nothing about research or interdisciplinary work or making own projects or being creative, our program is not for you. We want you to be a great musician, but we want you to be a team player with a backpack with all kinds of extra tools so that your possibilities on the professional field are as big as possible. For that, we have the next door week, which is one week in February when all normal lessons are uh, canceled and the school is for one week for the students. They can submit um, interdisciplinary projects with uh, um, own proposals. They can also join workshops on that matter that we organize. Uh, they can work on creative projects that are have to be submitted for the, uh, at the end of the year, yeah, the master's final creative projects. So um, that's one laboratory week when the floor is totally yours. Um, and then um, an, another thing that really focus on is the collaboration between um, education and research. So we also run a third, cy third cycle program for research, PhDs and um, research projects. And the people who are running these uh, research projects, they also come to teach in our program. For instance, they will give some history of music, some modules, they will help with um, um, projects with ensemble playing or um, or also give some subjects. So this, uh, this is really a very connected um, thing in our program. Um, yeah, about internationalization, uh, I already told you that um, our school is a really international school, but we um, carefully examine that um, this is in balance. We don't want to end up with a situation when we have 90% international students, eh? because then there is no balance. Why do we want this international um, um, population to be in balance, like 50-50? Because in that way you can have a real um, uh, relationship with each other eh? and intercultural exchanges. If, if one of the groups is too dominant, then that's not possible anymore. Um, 
the focus of the program is of course international. We work within the frames of IEC, which is the umbrella organization for all European conservatoires. Um, you will also see that uh, quite a lot of our main teachers are international teachers. We have about 40 master classes every year where we have international masters coming in to work with you. And I already told you about the arts campus. That's, uh, that's an international place. Um, so you will hear a lot of um, English and Spanish and some French and of course also some Dutch, but you know, languages are, um, are not important in that way in our school. Um, we, uh, we also uh, um, collaborate with uh, Erasmus student and teachers mobility. So every year we have like 15 to 20 students coming in and the same amount of students going out. For the voice and piano students, we collaborate with uh, European Opera Academy, which gives also um, excellent opportunities for short mobilities of three months. And um, for uh, improvisation, we have a, a network called Metric collaborate with Ten Haag and with other uh, international institutions. And we are starting now a project called Muzai with uh, people from Uzbekistan, uh, Palestine and Tunisia. Uh, so that's, that's very vivid, international scene. Now you probably want to know a bit more about how the program is formed. Eh? I have uh, included some examples from the bachelor and from the master in the uh, presentation, but of course I cannot cover all possibilities in this presentation. So um, when you want some more information, I can send it uh, on request. You see that there is a first chapter of instrumental and vocal training which uh, um, is taking care of um, instrument lessons, chamber music. Uh, this is now a program for orchestra instruments. So preparation of audition training and music practice. Music practice is everything connected to choir, ensembles, master classes, opera and uh, um, yeah, group musician making, I would say. Then there is an area of contextual studies uh, called um, music theory. There you have IML, also known as solfege, hearing analysis. Um, this is harmony and counterpoint and practical harmony and improvisation. This is the same for everybody um, in the first year. Then we have another uh, chapter of contextual studies, a cultural uh, training called music history research. Research you have uh, five years. Uh, it's a small amount of hours, but it's, uh, it's a, a red line in the curriculum. And then here, the uh, introduction to the arts and humanities. Uh, down under, you also see here physical awareness instruments. Um, everybody uh, has one year of um, prevention program for training um, to prevent injuries. Eh? For, as a musician, you're a kind of sportsman and it's important that you know how to use your body, how to uh, warm up, how to stretch, how to uh, reinforce the muscles that you use a lot when you make music so that you can avoid troubles in your data life. Um, for the voice department, there's a, a similar program, but they have uh, different uh, subjects. This is very much the same. Voice students, they have three years and much more training, um, physical training. Um, the music theory is a bit different uh, and more condensed. Every um, voice student also learns a bit of piano so that um, you can uh, accompany yourself on a, on keyboard or on a, on a piano and for students they have from the beginning onwards they have language coaching and they have uh, um, introduction to operatic work um, you see that for the main discipline there are 60 contact hours a week 
this is divided in 24 individual contact hours, six contact hours with group lessons and 30 contact hours where you will join your fellow students in the lesson yeah? because um, you can also learn a lot from uh, listening to each other. Um, for piano, more or less the same. Um, the pianist, they will have five years of practical harmony and improvisation. The same goes for guitar players. Yeah? All um, chord instruments, they get a much, a much more intensive training in that. Um, when you look at the master program, this is much lighter. Eh? There is no theoretical formation anymore, except for the composers. Um, you have entrepreneurship in the arts, research of course continues. And here you see creative project one. In the master, you have two years of creative project. The first year you will run uh, in an existing creative project that we organize or with external partners or that is organized by a graduating student. Uh, in the second year, you will make your own um, creative project. You also see that here the choice package is nine study points, which is much bigger than in the bachelor. But know that you can always add above your 60 credits, you can always add more subjects in a so-called credit contract um, if you want to do more optionals. Um, in the voice department, we will uh, focus on lead oratoria or opera. Um, some of the um, subjects are continuing, like uh, uh, language coaching and um, music practice. Literature study is part uh, of most programs in Bachelor 2 and Bachelor 3, but in the voice program it's Bachelor 3 and Master 1. And um, uh, Singers Wade also have coaching repertoire. One more example for piano. Here you see this Klavier Praktik, which is uh, in English called... Um, let me just have a look. Um, advanced piano musicianship. So it's a further training of practical harmony about reductions and uh, sight reading and uh, um, yeah, also this kind of uh, abilities on the piano without score. Uh, the educational master um, groups all this of course, you will not have room for optionals because the uh, package of education takes half of the program and some of the subjects are condensed, like um, chamber music and um, music practice is together in one subject, group musicianship. Um, the master two. Uh, in the educational program here you see, of course, the master exam of instrument and your, your lecture performance or your research master exam, but also art educational project and then again the subject from the educational program. This slide I will skip, that's just the um, collection of all the subjects related to education program when you do, when you finish your normal master and you want to follow with the shortened educational master. We also have postgraduate programs. So if you decide that after uh, five years study or after the master study, because some people just join in the master, you want to continue. There's a possibility to do a postgraduate in composition, as soloist in chamber music, as collaborative pianist, um, orchestral instrument, or Suzuki teachers training and children's and youth choir conducting. When can you uh, meet us? Of course, today. There's also the possibility to join the Young Conservatoire program. In the Young Conservatoire program, you have, uh, you do that before you are 18 and before you can enter the uh, conservatoire. Uh, you are still in music school, but you want more challenge. You want to play with uh, uh, 
as talented people as you, then you can join this program. Eh? It's also on the website. It's called Young Conservatoire. And um, here you can see um, some information. Um, it's for free, this program. You have to be admitted, but it's for free. So, and the audition is uh, 9th September um, 2020. Um, another really uh, great opportunity to get to know our teachers is the summer course that we do this summer. And I would really um, um, warmly uh, suggest to participate. Eh? Um, in that way, you can work during five days with our teachers. You can get to know them, see if you have the click, if the work, um, uh, if you really work well together. And here on the website, you see the whole list of teachers that uh, we have on offer. And so we have collaborative piano, composition, double bass, bassoon, guitar. Um, it's really a great opportunity. Also in the Corona times, I have to say that we will have this masterclass going. Uh, only the final concert and the group musician making is skipped, but the individual lessons can be taken. Um, we take all precautions uh, in the school, taking distance, having special screens for the winds, uh, asking everybody to wash hands and uh, ventilate rooms and uh, wear mouth masks. At least that's how it is now. Things are evaluating very fast now in Belgium, uh, but at the same time, it could be restricted in one month. So we take our precautions and we do it like that. Um, you can also meet the teachers if you want to have uh, um, an online um, meeting with the teacher. You can learn more about the uh, philosophy of, uh, of their um, way of teaching, what they expect. You can make an agreement that you um, send uh, a recording or a, a YouTube link and that they give comment on your uh, artistry and on your level. Um, as a preparation for the entrance examinations. So you can do that through this link. And of course, you can also check the music page on the website. With regard to the entrance uh, examinations, the next session is 24th of August until 6th of uh, September. The dates can be seen on the website. What will be expected from you? If you're a bachelor student, you will do an orienting uh, exam of uh, solfege, an orientation test of solfege and ear training. You will do an admission test of the main discipline. That's also for the masters, that's for everybody. And then uh, possibly you will have some additional orientation tests, um, like the pianist table will do a test on practical harmony. The difference between the uh, orientation tests and the main discipline test is that orientation test um, will not be used to, to fail you. It's more like a barometer that gives you an idea on your competences and also gives us an idea if you need to take extra training on it or not, but it has to be done. Now, uh, the first session of the entrance examinations we have done online because of the corona. We are now um, looking if we can do the second session both online or in uh, live. Um, the information on that should be on the website in like two, three weeks because we are still waiting for the context and uh, the new regulation from Blora, which is the, the um, the body that decides on how um, university college uh, education can be organized now during Corona times. But if you can't make it live, there will sure be the possibility to do the test online, both for the solfege and both for uh, the uh, main discipline. So now I will uh, close the screen sharing and I will open the chat and then um, we can um, answer questions. 
um, you can put on your um, your video. Uh, it's nicer for me to see you. Uh, I will invite you to start your video. Um, and you just type in the chat your questions. Okay. I hope I made a lot clear and I'm looking forward. to see your questions. If you want, because I see nothing appear at the moment, you can also open your mic and uh, ask the question like that. I will unmute all. Aha, a question from Alex. What level of Dutch does a student need to take the educational master? Um, that's a good question. Um, I will have to look it up. I think it's C1 or B2. It's not my program, so I'm not so well informed on that one. I have a colleague who is running the educational masters. But it should be fluent enough to teach in Dutch and to understand well in Dutch. Um, if you send me, Alex, if you send me your mail, I will um, send you the information. Okay. Um, Kian Lee says, I'm currently a high school, high school student. Uh, studies of conducting. Okay, my main discipline is piano. I understand from the website that conducting is only offered at master level. Um, yes, so while you're doing your bachelor's degree of piano, you will be able to uh, take conducting as a subsidiary course. There's introduction to choir conducting, there's introduction to half a bra conducting, which is brass band conducting, and also possibilities to do uh, orchestra conducting. Um, so it's a bit the same like, uh, well, as I said, with the related instruments. You study this uh, normally as a conductor. You also have your own um, choir or ensemble um, at home where you practice with. Um, and uh, if your level after these years is, is good enough and you have your bachelor degree in piano, you can make an entrance examination to start the master in conducting. You could also do the master in conducting after finalizing your master in piano. Voor de piano bachelor opleiding, een vraag van Thomas. Hoeveel uur zou je moeten spenderen per dag achter je piano? Ja, Thomas, dat hangt natuurlijk een beetje af van, um, van jouw beginniveau hè, en van uh, hoe snel jij leert. Maar ik ben zelf conservatorium studenten geweest, piano, lang geleden dan. En um, ik studeerde toch wel een uur of vier per dag in de weekdagen en in het weekend vijf à zes uur. Hè. Vandaar um, dat wij ook zeggen dat het heel belangrijk is om uw lichaam te verzorgen, om uh, goed uw, uw warming-up te doen, uw cooling down, uw, uw, um, uw, uw spieren. Um, te verzorgen en, en uh, ja, een gezond lichaam te hebben. Want dat is natuurlijk een, een belasting, dat weet ik. Hè. Maar dus uh, reken erop dat je, dat je wel wat uren zult uh, verzetten. Niet alleen om piano te oefenen, maar ook bijvoorbeeld om je kamerpartituren in te studeren. Hè. Um, wat is het basisniveau om te starten? Ik zit in de vierde graad, het tweede jaar orgel. Kan ik ergens voorbeelden vinden van het vereiste niveau? Wel, Mireille, ik denk dat het beste is dat je eventjes contact opneemt met Joris Verdijn. Dat is de docent orgel. Ik zal zijn mailadres nu in de chat zetten. Um, ik zet dat enkel aan jou, tenzij dat er nog... Maar ik zal het aan iedereen zetten. Misschien zijn er nog mensen die interesse hebben in orgel. Voilà. Um, 
Je, je stuurt hem een berichtje, hè? dat is wat ik, wat ik zei van die online kennismaking. Onze docenten die zijn er allemaal heel enthousiast over en doen er allemaal aan mee. Hè? Je stuurt hem een berichtje en uh, je, um, je vraagt daar eventjes over. We hebben uiteraard hebben wij op de website, wanneer je registreert voor de toelatingsproeven, hè? dan uh, kan je in een van de stappen ook het... Um, programma vinden waarmee je moet aanmelden. En daar staan uh, de werken op die, uh, die gevraagd worden. Maar als je die werk niet kent, ja, dan zijn je daar nog niks mee. Dus ik zou voorstellen dat je rechtstreeks contact opneemt met Joris Verdijn. Goed. Um, is this ask? If your level of hearing and solfege is not big enough, can you be admitted to the bachelor training? Um, yes, so that's what I, I will answer because that might be in, uh, in English because that might be a question that is interesting also for our international uh, candidates. Uh, if your level is not sufficient, you will be allowed, but you will be asked to do as an optional some extra uh, solfege or some extra hearing. Um, in this way, you can... Um, make your level um, higher and after the, the end of the first year you will have the full level that is required for the second year. Okay? What you can also do is you inscribe for the summer course because we also have um, a, a training in um, solfege and hearing during the summer course. Okay? So if you are a bit afraid, sometimes it's long ago since you had it in the music school, if you want to fresh up, you just inscribe for the summer school. Uh, Anna Maria, uh, you have the same question for voice as Mireille, that's regarding the, the starting level. Okay? So the answer is the same, have already a look at the website um, for the, the program that is asked for the entrance examination, but I will give you the uh, mail address of Luc Antonis. Luc Antonis is the section head of the voice department and um, he will answer you um, more in detail uh, with some examples. Um, Luc Antonis is also the section head for conducting. So uh, for the previous question of conducting, you can turn to him uh, and ask for more information on that. Mathieu de Koning vraagt, is er een verschil in het eindniveau dat je behaalt op je instrument tussen de educatieve master en de normale master? Nee, er is geen verschil. So from the students who finalize in the educational master, we expect the same quality. Only the amount of music, for instance, ask for chamber music or for music practice, the amount will be less, but the level has to be the same. So it's not an inferior program. It's uh, definitely not. It's a very heavy program, as I said before, because you combine all the things that you learn uh, in, the, in the regular um, discipline program with the educational program. However, what you can do and what uh, many students do is instead of two years, they divide the subjects over three years. So, for instance, they start with the subjects of the main discipline in year one. They do the master exam of instrument in year two. And during these first two years, they take already some of the educational subjects and the rest of the educational subjects they take in year three. For instance, the internships and so on and so on. So that makes it um, a bit um, lighter, but then of course it's again uh, three years. Uh, Mireille asks if there is a possibility for organ in the summer school. I can ask the teacher. He has not um, um, applied for it, but... Um, you can ask the teacher if there is a possibility for an organ summer course. 
if he doesn't give one, he will definitely know uh, another place where you can do it. Yeah? Joris Ferda is a really very, very nice man. You don't have to be afraid to, to ask these things to him. Um, Alex asks, I have an offer to start a master with you. Ah, great. Uh, do you think it's likely because of Corona that lessons will be happening as um, normal? I'm a bit scared of renting a flat in the course and the course won't actually be starting properly. Um, I've, I really very much understand this question. Eh? Um, as you know, in Belgium, the situation is now rather under control. Eh? We are in the tail of the epidemic. Many of the um, um, restrictions has been uh, smoothened last week and uh, we will definitely start next year. Um, what we will definitely do is give the um, training in the main discipline live. For the first years, the bachelor's one, we will do as much life as is uh, accepted. Yeah? Um, for the second and the third years of bachelor's who are already in our program and used to work, it will be a combination of online teaching and life teaching. This is the situation at this moment. Yeah? Um, but as I said, things change. It could be that much more people are allowed on the campus than which is now. Now they say like it will be about 30% of the people that are allowed on the campus. That means 30% of the normal population of the campus. Which means that, for instance, for music history at this moment, we are thinking of making groups of the students and uh, having um, group one live in the school in week one. The others, they follow the lesson on live streaming. Group two live in the second week and the others following the lessons on live streaming. And the same with group three. So that's every two or every three or every four weeks you have a live lesson and for the rest you have online lessons, but you follow the live lessons of the other group. Um, this is how we, we think of organizing ourselves at this moment. Um, but there is now an important um, negotiation going on between this Vlora and the Gies. This is an expert group. Um, and normally in the course of next week or the week after, we will know more and we will know if we can make it looser or not. Eh? But anyway, you will have physical um, lessons in the school and the program is going on eh? online or uh, uh, life. Um, so don't hesitate to come. Eh? We also um, have uh, uh, Erasmus students going, coming in next year. Is it aantal contacturen in het voorbeeldprogramma voor de bachelor per week? Nee, dat is per jaar. Eh? Um, 60 uur per week, dat zou uh, heel waar zijn, denk ik. Uh, dus uh, je hebt normaal gezien twee, uur, twee contacturen zang per week. Bij de zangklassen zijn er ook uh, veel uh, groepslessen. Hè. Bij, bij zang uh, gebeurt dat meer dan bij instrument. Dus ik weet van een aantal docenten die individuele les geven. Je hebt dan um, contactmomenten met de begeleider. En je hebt dan één keer per week een groepsles. Um, Als je daar meer details wil over weten, het hangt ook af bij welke docent dat je gaat studeren. Dan vraag je dat eventjes via Luc Antonis um, en dan kan die jou rechtstreeks in contact brengen met de zangdocent. Voor zang wil ik eventjes toelichten dat wij vanaf volgend jaar vier docenten hebben. Dus Anne Cambier en Gary Jankowski die, uh, die blijven en uh, Andrew Richards en Susanne Schimak die komen erbij. Als je meer wil weten, kan je op de website de bio's opvragen en je kan ook een kennismaking online aanvragen. Ze zullen ook um, aanwezig zijn op de uh, zomerstage. So Alex says thank you. Oké. Okay. Um, I think I have responded to all the questions. Ah, there is a new message. 
Op hogeschool staat heel open voor ASS. Kan je dat nog eventjes toelichten? Mireille? Wat bedoel je met ASS? Oké, okay, ja. Um, ja, dus wij hebben ook een, um, uh, een, een service daar rond. Dus het is heel fijn dat je die vraag ook stelt. Dank je wel trouwens. Um, en dat heet individuele aanpassingen. Hè. Um, onze studentenbegeleider Magda Tielemans, die, um, die is altijd beschikbaar voor, ja, voor een, uh, um, een individueel gesprek daar rond. Ik zal ook eventjes ga haar gegevens in de chat zetten. Um, wacht, hè. Dat app.be. Ja. En uh, dan zorgen wij ervoor dat er een aantal aanpassingen zijn in de manier waarop dat je bijvoorbeeld examen volgt. Of um, we, als je dat wenst, dan kunnen wij de docenten uh, inlichten van de individuele aanpassingen. Hè. Dat beslis jij of dat we de docenten inlichten. Uiteraard is het makkelijker voor de docenten om er rekening mee te houden als ze het weten. Um, en uh, op die manier begeleiden wij jou zo goed mogelijk. Hè. Dus... Uh, we hebben een aantal studenten die, uh, um, die genieten van deze aangepaste maatregelen. Dat geldt ook trouwens voor dysorthografie en dyslexie. En, uh, um, we hebben ook speciale um, work, um, allee, arrangementen voor mensen die al werken. Uh, werkstudenten en verder enzovoort. Dus daarin volgen wij de, le de lijn van de app Hoogschool. Onderwijs in conservatorium is heel individueel. Hè. Dat is heel... Um... Ah ja, Arno, uiteraard. Sorry, 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 Arno. Uh, Mireille is de mama. Um... Um... Kunstonderwijs, alleen muziekonderwijs, is heel individueel. Dus wij kennen iedere student en wij zorgen ervoor ook dat iedere student goed gevolgd wordt en uh, uh, op, zijn, op de best mogelijke manier kan, uh, kan evolueren. Hm? Arno zwaait is, dan weet ik wie van de twee dat jij bent. Want er zijn twee jongens op het scherm. Ah ja, oké, okay. met de lange haren. Hoi. <laughs> so, any more questions from our international guests? No. It's great. Ah, nog een vraag. Is er een, uh, is there, I will talk in English this one. Is there uh, um, a barrier of age or a maximum of age to start a bachelor? Eh? The, um, no, there is not. The uh, condition is that you have a, a diploma of uh, high school eh? and that you have in your country uh, with this diploma access to the university studies. Um, another um, condition is that you pass the entrance examination. Yeah? But apart from that, there is no, um, there's no barrier. Of course, when you are 45 and you want to start to study violin, yeah? the possibility for evolution is less, uh, probably less than when you start studying violin when you're 17 or 18. Yeah? But for instance, for conducting uh, of a composition uh, or also for voice, we have uh, students that have, uh, uh, that have a, a higher uh, age. Um, with regard to, the, to the, low, the lowest level of age, as I said, there is the possibility to enter already the conservatoire as a young talent. There is this young conservatoire um, uh, possibility, but it's also possible, it's uh, uh, called procedure um, alternative entrance, something like that, but it's in Dutch. And then you can make a dossier, 
uh, and you can already uh, if you can prove that you are really successful uh, in young talent, doing already lots of competitions and um, etc. Et and then you can start already some subjects at the school uh, if your file is allowed while finishing your high school. Uh, but normally people enter uh, when they're 17 or 18 uh, with the bachelor. But uh, this is not uh, a condition. Okay. It's uh, it's eleven o'clock. I don't know if we have more questions. If you have a question. Uh, this is being recorded. Will it be available online? Yes, I was asked to record it so that they can put it on the website um, to, for other people who, who want to have this, uh, this information. So I will send the recording to the communication office with skipping, of course, the question uh, uh, parts and ask them to put it online. Uh, but I can't tell you yet when and where it will be available. Um, if you want to receive my PowerPoint, you can also send me a message and then I can send you the PowerPoint in Dutch or in English as you want. If you have additional questions, you can also ask them to me. My name is Inge. Inge Simons and I'm head of classical music. Okay. So thank you much. Thank you very much for your interest in the school. And uh, I hope to see you on the summer course um, and maybe on the entrance examinations and um, wish you good luck and a very, very nice summer. And if you have any more questions, just mail me, okay? So, bye.